So this laptop turns on, the Toshiba logo comes on, next Windows 10 logo appears with the spinning round dots, after which we get a black screen. Afterwards, the laptop will just not boot onto the Windows desktop screen being stuck on a black screen. This is a typical scenario and the fix is rather simple and will also work for a desktop PC. Let's take it out. Hey Nimtags, this is Ash from Hilmitech helping you develop a better relationship with tech, so subscribe to go from newbie to techie. This is a Toshiba Satellite L775-18E. It has an Intel Core i3, 6GB of RAM, a mechanical spin drive of 500GB and was shipped with Windows 7. I wasn't able to find the exact specs for this model but there are other variations of this Toshiba satellite. For this particular issue, pay attention to the symptoms and the fact that we got to a Windows logo loading screen means that we are getting a successful post and at this stage it will be an issue with either the drive or Windows startup issues or even a combination of both. An old mechanical hard drive coupled with years of Windows bloatware and unnecessary startup programs and possibly zero to very little maintenance of your drive means it's time to upgrade to an SSD. Yes, you can try to fix Windows startup issues and I do have a video on that, check it up there. It may work, it may not work. The last resort would be to do a complete Windows reinstall, but I would not advise here as the mechanical drive will keep giving you problems. After switching off the laptop, I'm going to turn it back on and uh, let's see if we can access uh, BIOS by pressing F2 or delete key. And yes, as you can see, we can access BIOS and once you're there, you can check any system information, which is again, good news for the post issue. So we are now going to do one of my favorite things. At this stage, my first go to troubleshoot technique is to boot into this laptop through a Linux distro like Linux Mint. This is a 64 bit version. And yes, there is a video on how to create one. You can choose any distribution. Be wary of creating an MBR version as opposed to a GPT version for older BIOS system like these ones. And also you may need to create a 32 bit one if your laptop is even older. So we're going to plug that in. Okay, and we are going to restart, pressing ESC on there, and we're going to restart, and I think we need to click on uh, F12, yeah, F12 on this laptop brings me the boot menu, and I'm going to select the verbatim store, which is the USB, this one, and hopefully in no time we should be able to, there you go, uh, trying to boot into Linux Mint. I can see the Mint logo, which is good news. And there we have it, after a few seconds, we are onto Linux Mint desktop, which is good news to me as it almost confirms that the problem is with the drive and or Windows. Now, once you're there, go and check your Windows drive and we can see it clearly with two partitions and we can still access the data, which means that the spin drive is somewhat still working. You can copy data at this stage over to an external hard drive. You can also test other things like, for example, your internet connection, your audio, etc. At this stage, if you are considering to upgrade or not, one thing you could potentially do is to open a browser and go to a video playback platform like YouTube, open up a 1080p video and check the resources that is consuming while you're just simply browsing. And a full HD 1080p video should play smoothly with no stuttering for a laptop or an older computer to be considered worthy of uh, keeping or upgrading. Now, if you see that just opening a full HD video stutters and lags and gives you problem and you're using almost 100% resources, as you can see, probably in this one, it's kind of borderline. Bearing in mind that this test is just being done from a USB drive, there will be other variables like your internet connection and also the type of drive you're using, hopefully an SSD. But anyway, with 6GB of RAM and a dual core of i3, we can still say that, yep, this is probably worth upgrading to an SSD for general browsing and kind of office multitasking, really, but not for gaming and nothing more strenuous than this. It's operation time. I'm going to remove my USB drive and also disconnect from the mains power. Remove uh, the mouse and we're going to turn this over. And the first thing we're going to do is remove the battery. Okay. After which, turning back over, press and hold the power button for about 30 seconds to discharge any 
possible static electrical buildup. Now, please be careful with any electronics repair. This is not an advice to do it yourself. This is just a educational tutorial. Do at your own risk or consult a professional. All right. Lucky for us, this uh, back cover looks fairly simple to access the hard drive, which is going to be here usually. So I'm going to do this and you need a normal little uh, Phillips screwdriver, which you should have in your arsenal, hopefully. Very handy. And there we have it. The hard drive is kind of just there. So you're going to have to remove it by probably pulling this out. And that comes so easy. That is unbelievably easy. And obviously this is encased in a little bracket. We just need to remove that. Okay. It's not even a bracket. It's just like an aluminum foil cover. What gives? This is really weird. Now, once we've removed the hard drive, get an SSD of your choice. I'm picking this Kingston A400 SSD. Now, there are better SSDs, definitely, but I would not necessarily recommend a high-end one for a laptop like this, which is old, unless you're planning to maybe upgrade this into a more modern computer because you may not benefit from the extra speed. So any entry-level SSD will do. I'm going to leave some links for Amazon affiliates in the description below and feel free to use them you'll help out the channel without costing extra thanks a million and there we go again just plug that back in there slide into the slot and clicks in i don't think it's going to go anywhere hopefully it doesn't come with any form of padding so if i have to i'll put something on top just to secure it but for now before i'm going to put my back cover up i'm going to just test it sometimes laptops are complicated to put back so it's worth testing i'm going to leave the battery off for now okay don't need to do this and at this stage all you need to do is grab yourself a windows 10 go to windows website download the media creation tool and uh, get yourself the latest windows version and this one is most likely going to be a home version and just follow the steps but with the home version uh, i would advise to disconnect from the internet while you're installing and that will allow you the ability to create a local account i actually forgot the other one was a gpt windows 10 so we're going to create a MBR Windows 10 version. Don't forget to do this for older BIOS. And hopefully, if we turn it on, it should detect the Windows drive straight away without us having to select the boot drive. I'm not going to select anything. And uh, Windows 10 setup 64 bit. Yep, because I've got both on there. And at this stage, you just need to follow the prompts really to install Windows 10. A little disclaimer at this stage, Windows 10, there's no guarantee it's going to keep working because they do break with almost every update, especially with older computers. So that is something for you to bear in mind. Now, since this computer should already be digitally signed with uh, Windows, we can just skip that. We can say I don't have a product key and it should, in fact, uh, uh, detect it so we're going to select uh, Windows 10 home which is fine and click on next and then we just keep following the prompts accept the license okay click on next and we're going to do a custom installation there's only one drive in there we're just going to click on next and Windows is going to do its own thing now at this stage, I'm going to advise if you know anything about Windows that they do tend to break every so often and you have to kind of do a fresh install every so often. So one of two things you should do, either find a way to put two different drives in your laptop so you keep one drive for your Windows operating system, the other one for your data, or if you don't have space for two drives, and again, I've got a video up there, you can watch how it's done. You can create a partition at some point here or even after you install Windows and put your OS on one of the partitions and your data on the other. But always back up, back up, back up before you cry, especially to me. I ain't going to do nothing about it. You need to back up your data. Otherwise, do the wise thing and use Linux. Different subject for different time. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Now, this is very simple. There's plenty of video tutorials how to install Windows on a brand new SSD or new computer. And I have videos on this as well. Check it up there. But if you want to know how to build a computer from scratch, I've done a full series called the One PC Tool. Them all is going to be somewhere on your screen. And also, if you want to get into Linux, I have some starter series and i need to build up on it so check both of them out don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet and i will see you in the next one peace out